Jesus Image Church. Such a wonderful opportunity we have this morning to worship Jesus. This whole week, I've just been reminded of all God has done the last five months in the house of the Lord. And I've just been like, Lord, I'm so thankful for what you've done and your presence, the healings, the miracles, the salvations, but I'm not satisfied. And I was just thinking this morning, what would happen in this room if we lifted up our hearts and said, Lord, we're so thankful for what you did. We won't forget what you did. We won't forget what you did in our hearts, Lord. But can there be more? And there is more in the house of the Lord. And so I'm going to read Psalm 103. But I would just love if our hands could be lifted and our hearts lifted. And if you could just look at Jesus while I read the scripture. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life, and who has redeemed your life this morning from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So Jesus, just sing your love to him right now in your seat. There's something that we can give. There's more that we can give this morning. So Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're gonna do by faith, Lord. We thank you for the strongholds that will be broken this morning. We thank you for the ones that will hand their hearts over to you, Lord, that their names will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord. And we just thank you, Jesus, that we are not satisfied this morning. We thank you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It will forever be all about you, Lord. And we are satisfied with your presence. God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Yeah, can we just continue to sing our love to Jesus? We don't wait for a song, we look at the Lamb. Oh, oh, oh.
such a beautiful presence of Jesus today. I want us to posture our hearts just to love him. Will you just for a moment just tell him how much you love him, church? We love you, Jesus. You're so beautiful, Lord. You're so high and exalted, king above all kings, Lord. Beautiful lamb that was slain, Jesus. We worship you. I kept hearing this passage as we were worshiping, I just wanna read it to you. It's in Luke 19, it says, as he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. See, this is how we have to posture our heart today when we come to meet with the King of Kings. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles he has seen. Have you seen some wonderful, wonderful miracles, church? We have to praise him for what he's done. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. And this is what I kept hearing in my spirit this morning. He replied, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. The rocks will cry out, my friends. If we stay quiet, the rocks will cry out to the King of Kings because he is so worthy. So we don't come into church this morning just to check it off the box and say we attended. We come in to worship the King of Kings. Lord, we will not let the rocks cry out today. We praise you, King. Come on, church, just love him for a moment. We worship you, Jesus. Lamb that was slain, lamb that was slain. Righteous one, warrior. Jesus, name above every name, the name above cancer, the name above affliction, the name above fear, the name above depression, the name above suicide, the name above divorce, the name above it all, you are the name above all. Nothing can stand against your power. Nothing can stand against you, Lord. You are the name above every name. Darkness has to flee in the sight of you, Jesus. There's no darkness where there's light. It's impossible. It's impossible. So as we follow your light, you expel the darkness from us in Jesus' name. We love you, we love you. Jesus, forgive us if we've come here just with mediocre hearts, Lord. We give you everything today, God. We don't wanna become comfortable, Lord, or familiar with you, Jesus. You're too good for that. So we worship you. We thank you, God, that chains will break today in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, Lord, that souls will come to the kingdom today in Jesus' name. We thank you that prodigal children will come home today in Jesus' name. We thank you that sickness will flee in your presence in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that even the children, Lord, in Children's Church will have an encounter with you this morning in Jesus' name. We thank you that all those watching across the world will receive you today in Jesus' name. We thank you, the name above every name. It's our joy, it's our honor to worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We praise you this morning. We give you this day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Are you guys excited to be in church this morning? Oh, he's so worthy. He's so worthy. Just give him one more shout of praise. We love you, Jesus. You guys can go back to your seats. I want to wish all of you wonderful mothers in here this morning a happy Mother's Day.
You make the world go round. Come on, we can give the mothers more love than that today. We love you, and I'm gonna welcome Kaylee up here. Can we welcome Kaylee? Yeah. I accidentally called my mom on the way up here. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everyone. You guys are so beautiful. We honor you. If you're a mother in any capacity, just want to remember you today and say thank you, and I hope you get refreshed. Um, our team has beautiful flowers for you all on your way out and even donuts in the lobby. So enjoy both of those things with whoever you came with today, but we love you. Oh, I want to make mention of one more thing. Um, at the end of this month, we have a Connect class that I would like to invite you to. If you've been coming to Jesus Image and you're looking for a way to just connect and find out more and even learn about serving, you can find that on the, our Church Center app. Um, and I think there's a QR code as well that you can scan. Um, I also wanted to just open in prayer with the offering this morning. Um, the Lord had put something on my heart, and I just want to take time to look at him first. Father, we love you. Jesus, this is for you. This is your house. We welcome you here. We honor your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I've been so gripped by how David worships the Lord. And I want to read to you Psalms 132. It's kind of long, but bear with me. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, surely I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Are we the dwelling place of the Lord? I hope so, that's why I came. I wanna be with him every moment. I know you're hungry for him as well. I wanna be a people like this. David vowed to the Lord that he wouldn't even build his own thing. He was so desperate for the presence of God and loved him with his whole heart that he gave his whole, he didn't even sleep. He wanted to find a resting place for the tabernacle of the Lord. He wanted the fullness of the presence of God to be honored and have his way. And that's what we want. This isn't a cute thing we do. Does that make sense? Like, this is his home. He came to be with him. And I want the fullness of that. And it goes on to say, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my, capital my, resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with sal salvation. And her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There I will make a horn of David grow. Thank you, Jesus. So he, he, he covers his house. He provides for his people when we take time and our whole heart to make, a room, make room for him. He does it all. We don't have to covet our money. Like it, We just come and we give our whole, I want to vow to the Lord like David did. I want that. And I'm inviting you to have a posture in your heart this morning like that. But that would be why you live and breathe. Because I'm telling you, when you meet the, the one you love, when you meet the Lord in the dwelling place, it will make your heart cry like that. And so I just want to invite you today that when you hold your seed in your hand, your finances, your, your offering and your tithe, that you remember why and what we're doing. Father, I thank you so much for everything that you've given. And I, we just want to give you a place to dwell. We're inviting you again. We won't stop. We want more. We love you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask you to just 
come and have your way here and bless every giver, Lord. I thank you for even giving us the desire, Lord, that, that is of you to give to your house, that we would joyfully give with a heart like David that would so desperately want you, Lord, that we would give everything, all of our time, our money, our heart, everything, Lord, it's yours anyways. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, yes. There's text to give on the screen as well. Um, if you're serving or watching online, you can text the number on your screen and the uh, buckets are up here, so. Oh, and envelopes also. <laughs> Thank you.
we give the Lord praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. And let's just lift our hands. We give you all the glory and honor and power. It's all yours forever and ever. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We thank you for your kindness, your love, your goodness. And we ask you, wonderful Lord, to glorify the name of Jesus. You are the Lord, the giver of life. And I ask in Jesus' name that many would come alive today in their hearts. All for the glory of the beautiful, matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise? Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Well, I'd like you to remain standing. We're going to baptize people. Obviously, that's what that's there for. So I'd like to invite the baptizees to come line up very closely to the altar. And uh, can we welcome them as they come in? Thank you, Lord. I think we're baptizing some little ones. Thank you, Lord. Come as close as you can, please. Come on, church. This is wonderful. You can be seated, those of you in your seats. I just want to have a quick talk with those who are being baptized this morning in this wonderful church. It's such an honor to do this. This is uh, one of the favorite things, uh, one of my favorite things in the ministry is to baptize people who are giving all to Jesus. Uh, those of you who are, actually, uh, just feel the Lord quickening me. Can we lift our hands? Holy Spirit, we yield the best we know how we ask for your precious anointing to move and descend upon us and empower us uh, for this moment that Jesus would be glorified that we do nothing in the flesh in the name of Jesus, amen those of you who are being baptized, uh, this is beyond special, this is uh a holy privilege by which your life will be transformed in many ways. Uh, you say, what's the requirement? Of course, faith in Jesus, absolutely. Uh, complete trust in Jesus. But what I'd like to do is uh, invite you into the biblical definition of what it means to trust Jesus, not the, uh, I don't know how to really explain it, American mental definition of merely just agreeing with uh, a few facts about Jesus. Trusting in Jesus means to trust him with the entirety of your life and being. It does mean to trust him with your eternity, of course, but it means to trust him now. It means that Jesus himself becomes your life. It means that you are relinquishing the right to your life this morning. It's a big deal. So I want you to hear me. I have no interest in baptizing anyone this morning who isn't committing to what I'm talking about. The Lord wouldn't honor it. But giving everything to Jesus means that we give him all we are, past, present, and future. And if need be, we lay our lives down for him. In the heart, physically if need be, we would gladly lay down our life for the one who carried his cross for us. Amen? So, what I need to know now, before we go any further uh, from all of you, is are you all willing to give the Lord Jesus everything this morning? If you're not, I would say it's fine. It's not fine. It's a bad decision. <laughs> uh, really bad. The worst one you can make. But... Uh, I certainly don't want you to get baptized because you feel pressure this morning because you're standing up here in front of God's people. I'd much rather you go sit down or if the, the little ones... Are all these little ones being baptized? Yeah. Are you two being baptized as well? Okay. And do you know what you're about to go do? You ready to give the Lord everything? Okay, so everybody here, if, if, if you're not... The church will not judge you. You can just go sit down and say, you know, I'm not ready to make this kind of commitment. But if you are, today will be glorious. I said, if they are, today will be glorious. 
the one, one of the wonderful things about baptism is that baptism is absolutely an encounter with God if done properly. The Holy Spirit has blessed the waters of baptism and the waters in general since Genesis chapter 1. And the, the same has been true on into the life of Jesus. And Jesus himself was baptized. And Jesus being our Lord, the perfect patterned son, we gladly follow him into the waters of baptism, listen carefully now, which is to follow him into his grave. Do you understand that you're being buried with Christ Jesus today in these waters? So really, yes, the waters are a bath. They wash the conscience, Peter tells us. Uh, they prepare us for a wedding that is to come. These are bridal baths. In other words, you will marry the Lord experientially one day. You'll sit at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and the fullness of our salvation will be experienced, even physically, with a brand new glorified body. We will marry the one who has a glorified body. This is incredible. This is incredible. You'll come forth from the waters experiencing the resurrection of Jesus this morning. That's what the Bible teaches, that there is a saving work, in a sense, that takes place in the waters. But our salvation is not in the waters. Clearly, the Scripture says that, that our salvation is found in the resurrection of Jesus. And so today, I believe that as you enter the water, that uh, you're going to come forth in newness. You're going to come forth in liberty. You're going to come forth with the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you. And so what we'll do as you come out of the water, we do this in every baptism. We'll anoint you with oil in the sign of the cross on your forehead. And I don't believe that is symbolic either. And as I said last week, even if it were, the Greek word for symbol means that which is eternal and supernatural, meeting the natural. So I'm happy to call it symbolic if it's in its proper definition. I do believe the Holy Spirit himself will fall upon all of you in power. And that you will leave the waters bathed, not only in water that is natural, but bathed in the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Can we give the Lord praise for that? That's wonderful. Now... Um, as I say each time we do this, we're going to recite one of the great creeds of the church. I have a few favorites. The Nicene Creed is certainly one of my favorites. And so what I'd like to do is for the entire church to stand. This is an anthem of the church. This is the declaration of our faith and what we believe as God's people. I'm sure how many of you have felt in the past... Uh, I guess if you were to include Sunday nights, we've been meeting together for five years this fall. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we're still here. Uh, our, our local church community is, I guess, what, two years and a few months old? I should say our Sunday morning community is, is, is uh, just a couple years old. But how many of you remember over the years when we read this creed, you start to feel the authority of God build and build and build and build? And the reason that is, is because any time you proclaim the majesty of Jesus, he releases the presence of the Spirit to, to endorse the truth of what he is. You can never go wrong lifting Jesus high. Amen. Now, those of you who come forward, this is vital. Because the Bible says that we need to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he is who he says he is. And so as you do this, it's vital that you declare what I'm, what I'm going to read first. And I want the whole church to do it as well because the declaration of Jesus isn't just for an altar call. This is our song. This is all we have. This is our message. Amen? So can we pick up those keys a little bit? Just fill the room. Maybe not that much. <laughs> okay. Can we just lift our hands? And I just want you to repeat this after me in boldness and with volume. I want heaven to hear it. 
and I want the earth to tremble. We believe in one God, we in one God. The, Father, the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, maker of, heaven and earth. Of, all of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and our salvation, He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. Just take a break there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. A Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Oh, what a wonderful Lord. What a wonderful Lord. Now, I just before you on the waters, I know every time I read that, those last few lines, I'm not Roman Catholic. I just want to clarify. This will probably be the last time I do it. Uh, after we read the, the creed. That word Catholic doesn't mean Roman Catholic. It means whole, worldwide, universal, but it actually means complete and whole. God's church is whole because Christ Jesus himself is whole. Amen. We are one people, one bride. Can we give the Lord praise? Let's welcome them to the waters. Thank you, Lord. And... Uh, Dion and Candice, would y'all just come around and just stand around and pray? Babe, why don't you come? It's Mother's Day. I don't know what that has to do with it, but it's wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you can be seated if you like. I know it's hard for some of you to stay seated during these baptisms, but isn't this wonderful? This is church. Amen. Okay. You can come forward. Hi there, what's your name? Um, my name is Caitlin Baxter. And where are you from? Um, from Originally from Wisconsin, but we moved to Florida. So. Moved to Florida. And why are you being baptized this morning? Um, because I just love Jesus. You ready to give him everything? Yeah. Okay, come on. Welcome her, would you? Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you'll need to face me. <laughs> All right. Caitlin? Yeah. Okay. Can I have your hands? Caitlin, do you give everything to Jesus today? Can we have the mic, guys? I need a mic. Do you renounce the world? Yes. Yes. Do you renounce the devil? Yes. And do you give your full heart to the Lord? Yes, I do. Do you repent of your sin? Yes. Caitlin, 
this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. Lord, let your power and presence come upon her as she receives the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for newness of life. Thank you for a clean slate. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Come on, guys. Give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. Hey there, what's your name? Uh, Kobe Horn. Kobe, why are you being baptized? Uh, so I can start a new life with Jesus. That's a good answer. And where are you from? Uh, Titusville, Florida. Titusville. You ready to give him everything? Yes, sir. Come on, bud. And while they're being baptized, church, just, just stretch your hands, pray for them. Pray that the wonderful presence of the Lord would come upon them. Colby, may I have your hands? Colby, do you renounce the world? Yes. Do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you repent of all your sin? Yes. And do you put your full trust and faith in Jesus Christ? Yes. Colby, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord, thank you for your presence. Let the gift of the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Spirit rest upon Colby all his days. Clothe him, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Judy, I'm hearing a song. Emmanuel. Hey, buddy. What's your name? Ryder. Roger? That's awesome. Oh, Ryder. Oh. I, I, I was like, man, he does not look like a Roger. Okay. <laughs> Ryder, why are you being baptized? Because I know that the Lord loves me and I love him. And what's the Lord's name? Jesus. Okay, get in there. Come on. <laughs> From the mouth of babes. Why do kids have the best theology? Right here, buddy. Can I have your hands? You want me to call you Ryder or Roger? Roger okay. All right, Ryder. You ready to answer some questions? Okay. Ryder, are you sorry for your sins? Can yes, you say sir. Yes? Yeah. Are you going to follow Jesus with your whole life? Yes, sir. And you want nothing to do with the devil, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Ryder, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Lord, come upon him. Use his life. Let the gift of the Spirit rest upon him. Why don't you just worship for a second, church? Let your power and presence come on him. Keep him from the world. Set him apart this day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing that, church. What's your name? Caleb. It's not Roger. No. Okay. No, it's not. <laughs> Why are you being baptized? 
because I want to be more with the Lord, and I hate this world. <laughs> okay, but you love people, right? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do I do about that one? Oh, get, get in the water. Come close. <laughs> you need a good bath. <laughs> okay. Okay. Before, let's have a little talk before I baptize you. Okay. <laughs> Caleb, right? Okay. So we can take the mic away for now. Okay. Okay, so what I need you to do is love the people. Yeah, yeah. So world in the scriptures means like a way of doing things, like a system sometimes. And the world can mean people. So God loves people. So the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So you hopefully, I mean, you love us, right? Yeah, okay, okay, good. So are you his parents? And you love your mom and dad? Yeah, yeah, okay. So what we wanna do is love the people. But when we talk about the world, we mean a way of life and a way of doing things that doesn't want Jesus. That's what we don't want. Like greed, we hate that, right? Because that's sin. You want to hate sin. Uh, uh, hatred, we hate that, right? Does that make sense to you? Lying, we hate that. But we love the people, amen? Okay, does that make sense? All right, so give me your hands. Caleb. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes. Yes. And do you want the Lord to take away anything wrong that you've ever done? Yeah. And are you going to follow the Lord for your whole life? And you want nothing to do with the devil, right? Yeah. Yeah, trust me. You don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, Caleb, will you follow Jesus forever? Yes. All right. Caleb. Today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Now, Lord, let your precious presence come upon him. And I thank you for the grace of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was awesome. Hi there, what's your name? Jasmine. Jasmine, why are you being baptized? Because I love Jesus and I want to live for him. Perfect, come on. Welcome Jasmine. <laughs> Who told me, Reese? Somebody I think on the staff said, you have the best job in the world. And I, I how true that is. We all do. What a privilege to be here. Yes. Jasmine, can I have your hands? Do you reject the way of the world? Yeah. Do you reject the devil? Yes. Yes. Are you sorry for all your sins? Yes. Will you follow Jesus forever? Yes. Do you give him your entire life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jasmine, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. The Lord seal her, mark her, clothe her with the precious presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say amen, church. Thank you, Lord. After I pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come rest on these people, I want you to give one amen at the same time from now on because the amen of the church is powerful. We're telling, we are agreeing with heaven's desire, so be it, Lord. Oh, no, come, actually, go back to the mic there. There you go. You're excited, sorry. What's your name? Parker. Parker. And why are you being baptized? Uh, to give my life to the Lord. Okay, come on. Parker, do you renounce your sin? Yes. Do you renounce the world? Yes. 
Do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you put your tr full trust in the Lord Jesus Christ forever? Yes. Parker, we baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, let the blessed presence of the Holy Spirit rest upon him all his days. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There you go. Thank you, Lord. Hey there. What's your name? Sophie. Sophie. Yes. Wonderful name. Where, where are you from? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Why are you being baptized? I want to give my everything to the Lord. I strayed for a while, but I want him to have everything, and I, I want to go so much deeper with him. What did it feel like to stray from him? What was your heart like then? It's like cold. Like you could be around a ton of people and you still feel alone. Um, but with God, I feel like you can be completely by yourself, but you're not alone. So. <laughs> so good. Are you Slavic? No, I'm um, Palestinian. I'm Palestinian, Puerto Rican. That's a fiery combo. I know. <laughs> my, my. May the Lord bring you the right man. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> yeah, make sure you give him some time off every day. <laughs> All right. Sophia? Huh? Yes. I sense something very special on you. The Lord's going to use you greatly. Sophie, do you renounce this world? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I do. Are you sorry for your sin? Yes, I am. Do you repent? Yes, I do. Now, do you put all of your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, gladly. For the rest of your days? Yes, I do. Sophie, this morning, it's our joy and honor to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I feel the presence of God on this girl. Sophie, may the grace of the Holy Spirit rest upon you all your days forever and ever and ever. Clothe her with the blessing of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And use her greatly. And let the fire in her heart never go out. In Jesus' name. Be blessed, Sophie. Amen. 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 Sweet girl. Sweet girl. Thank you, Lord. Puerto Rican and Middle Eastern, huh? Jess is Middle Eastern, and she thought she was Puerto Rican when I met her. <laughs> she wanted to be. Any Puerto Ricans here? Here's your girl, all right? <laughs> all right. What's your name? Diazman. Diazman. Mm -hmm. And why are you being baptized? To be a new creation in Christ. There you go. Where are you from? Um, St. Petersburg. No way. Yes. I grew up near there. Yes. All right. Then we'll baptize you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. It's cold, yeah. It's, it's warmer than the Jordan River, though. Uh, Diazmin, right? Yes. Yes. Diazmin, do you renounce the world? Yes. Do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you repent of your sins? Yes. And do you put your full trust and hope in Jesus Christ? Yes. Diazmin, this morning, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Our Lord, clothe her with the precious presence power of the Holy Spirit come upon her for your name's sake. Thank you for complete, complete newness. Thank you for the power of your blood. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hi there, what's your name? Raina. I like your shirt. Thank you. Why are you being baptized? To surrender to Jesus and give him full control. And where are you from? Claremont. Claremont? Yes. Come. Would you welcome her? What was your name again? Reina. Reina? Reina. Reina. Yes. Reina, do you repent of your sin this morning? Yes. Do you turn from the world? Yes. Reject the enemy himself? Yes. And give your full hope and trust to Jesus Christ? Yes. Reina, this morning we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, clothe Reina with the presence and the gift of the Holy Spirit. For your glory and namesake, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say amen. I want that amen to be a more thunderous. I want it to. Oh. <laughs> What's your name? Zachariah. Zachariah. Why are you being baptized? Because I'm just ready to go all in. <laughs> are you related to anyone in this room? <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. I think your sister has a sunburn. <laughs> or she's just really excited. Where are you from? Mount Dora. Mount Dora. Come on. Come on in. Is it Zechariah or Zachariah? Not sure. <laughs> What's the second letter in that name? Uh, A. Yeah, that'd be Zachariah. <laughs> so we're okay. <laughs> All right. Ah, thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for his life. Do you renounce this world? Yes. Do you renounce your sin? Yes. You announce the devil. Yes. And you put all your trust and hope in the Lord Jesus. Yes. We baptize you this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, may the grace and gift of the Holy Spirit come upon him and rest upon him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise. We're done. Oh, come on. Let's stand and give the Lord praise. Come on. Give the Lord praise. Let's sing that. Come on, Judy. Come up here. Crown him king of kings. Come on, every, every eye closed, lift your hands, let's bless the Lord. Around him, Lord of Lords, wonderful counselor, almighty God. He Sing it with everything in you.
just join hands just on across the aisles. Lord, we welcome your presence and power to speak. Thank you that your word is life, that your word is spirit and life. And so we believe that as we listen to your word this morning, that you fill us with the spirit. And we all say collectively as one family, feed us the bread of life. I want you to say that, church. Feed us the bread of life. Say it again. Feed us the bread of life. One more time. Feed us the bread of life. Oh, Lord, you've heard your children, and that's our prayer. And we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise? Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Judy. I love you. Are you grateful for Judy? Our whole worship team. What a blessing they are. Take your Bibles, if you would, uh, this morning. You love the Bible, I hope. A friend sent me recently a, an interesting uh, teaching that was a criticism against preachers valuing the Bible too much. And uh, all in the name of Jesus, when Jesus himself taught the Bible post-resurrection. Uh, but that's a different teaching. <laughs> Well, certainly that perspective is a different teaching. But we love your word here, Lord. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And even Jesus said, it is written of me in the scroll. Behold, I have come to do your will, O oh God. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. All right, for the next few minutes, I'm going to ask for your undivided attention. I want to continue our teaching on the blood of Jesus. How many of you were blessed last week? And I've, we've got amazing, amazing feedback online as well. There really is a lack of teaching on the blood of Jesus. And I, I believe that that is a, uh, it's a satanic plot and agenda. Um, the blood of Jesus carries the life of Jesus. The Bible says that that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And so to dishonor the blood is to dishonor the person of the Holy Spirit. And it is to uh, limit, limit is a weak word, it is to really uh, attack our own spiritual life when we stop valuing the blood of Jesus. And as you guys know, uh, communion is so central here in this church because the Lord is central. Uh, in this church, and he's given us this gift of his body and blood. It's interesting to me that, that uh, the scripture teaches us that uh, many are sick and have fallen asleep, Paul writes, because they did not discern the body and blood of the Lord in the covenant meal. So that tells me that taking communion improperly is a bad idea. Right? Anybody here want to get sick? Anybody here want to die early? No. Okay, good. The wisdom in the house is just exploding. Uh, good. We're on the same page there. So, so the flip side of the coin would be this, is that uh, if the church is incredibly sick on multiple levels, and I'm not against the church. I think the church is beautiful. Uh, if you're looking for a perfect church, you'll never find a church. Uh, people are flawed. And one thing I've learned about and I'm still learning about pastoring, is a lot of it is just walking people through junk. It's dealing with weakness. It's coming to the table. It's learning to resolve uh, situations uh, in the presence of the Lord according to the word as the supreme authority. And that combination really invites us into Christ-likeness. Does that make sense? Uh, when the word of God is not the supreme authority, everybody comes up with their own way of life, life with each other, uh, way of living. And typically they'll say, the Lord told me to do it this way. 
when in reality the scriptures forbid it, right? And so when there's no supreme authority, uh, the experience of being conformed into the image of Jesus is limited in our life. We actually, in a sense, become the Lord of our life when we don't allow the scriptures to determine our way of living before the Lord and each other. Does that make sense to you? So, um, I honestly think, uh, I believe this, that the church does not receive enough communion, not consistently enough, and does not receive communion properly. I think those two issues are a reason that the church is experiencing so much of the pain and weakness that she's experiencing. Does that make sense to you? So, um, a revelation of the blood is vital on multiple levels of life, especially, not especially, but yeah, especially in our reception of the body and blood of Jesus. And we do that every week here. I don't know how the church got into doing it like maybe, maybe once a month. And I think part of the, I mean, maybe a question we could ask is, what have we replaced the reception of the body and blood with? Why don't we have the time to receive the body and blood of Jesus? And what has cluttered our services to the point of us rejecting the consistent reception of the meal of God? That is a supernatural meal, by the way. Like I actually just now, um, I'm just being honest with you. I've got a list of a, a bunch of stuff I'm supposed to tell you, and it's good stuff. Yet there's something in modern day church culture that makes the pastor feel rushed. So why don't we cut the head off that demon And let the Lord be the Lord of his own house and service. So I'm going to give you the list. And then I'm going to go back to my teaching. Your carbs can wait. You, you should do intermittent fasting anyways. Summer's coming. Lean down. Get the six pack out. All right. Huh? Not a six pack. Thank you, baby. Wow. Jesse just said, please, you know, not a six-pack of beer. We know. We're not talking about beer. We're talking about conditioning. All right. That being said, I forgot to say this. Happy Mother's Day. And there is something, there is something I need to do. Actually, we do need to do this. Carla, would you come up? Lily, we want to honor Jessica this morning. Uh, So why don't you come up? And uh, why don't you guys come close? Let's stretch our hands. All of you precious ladies are getting a, a rose this morning, but Jesse's paid an amazingly high price to uh, say yes to the call of God on this house, on my life, and, and on her own life. And it's worthy of honor. And I think we can all say that this church would not be what it is without Jess, and neither would the broader movement. So why don't we just stretch our hands toward her? And um, actually, I'm going to ask you to pray, Lily. Can we get Lily a mic? Hmm? Yeah, you can pray over Jesse and all the mothers. Can we all stand? Jesus, we just thank you for the sacrifice that Jessica has given to this body. We thank you for every mother in this room, God. Yes, Lord. 
We thank you though for all they have done to bring us into this world. They're selfless. Their selflessness, God, their humility, Jesus. Jesus, I just thank you that Jess, what Jess has embodied, bringing that humility, bringing that selflessness and the integrity mm -hmm. of who she is. Yes. And sharing that with this house, God. Just honor her in this moment, God. We thank you for Jess and all the mothers watching and in the room. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we pray a special blessing on every mother, every mother who's mothered people in the spirit. Let your grace and presence rest upon them. Give them hearts, Lord, like the Virgin Mary who walked with you until the very end. Let them carry a loyalty for Jesus. I feel this so strongly right now, that the loyalty in your heart for Jesus, ladies, will help sustain what God is doing here in this church. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Amen. Can we thank God for every, every lady, every mother here? Love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I got into my sermon. This is probably the wildest uh, sermon flow in history. I heard Bill get asked a question by some of his preaching team at Bethel. Uh, how, do you how do you teach? He said, don't do it like I do. <laughs> um, son listen, adult Sunday school is vital. If you haven't signed up, I want you to. Um, there should be some info behind me. Is that right, David, right now? Is there info? Uh, you want to be strong in the foundations of the faith. Next week, I typically don't announce this sort of thing, but next week I am, uh, I am going to be teaching in children's church during worship. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to serve. And then over the... Yeah, you're like, are you? Uh, over the next few weeks, Jessica... Myself and Pastor Benny uh, will be preaching at youth, um, not every week in succession, but over the next few weeks, we're, we're going to jump in to the youth group. I felt something stir my soul. We, we would, we'd never announce uh, guest speakers, but I felt like the parents needed to know that we are aiming at a revival for the youth, and Pastor Benny said, I want in on it. We're also bringing in some guests, and we are going to pour our heart out into this next generation. God is going to break in his glory uh, through this next generation in a measure, I believe, that the earth has not seen. Amen? Um, Jesus Tour, we are coming back to Irvine uh, July the 28th. If you want to come, I would register quickly. People are registering from all over. It will be absolutely glorious. Now, lastly, uh, before I get into the blood again, I'm probably going to have to reintroduce the sermon. Uh, um, this summer, Jess and I and the kids are going to take a vacation. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's our first one in five years. And um, uh, I heard somebody say, you don't plant churches, you plant and birth churches. And birthing can be challenging. <laughs> but when the baby comes, it's so much greater than the challenge. Even Jesus said that. This has been amazing. But all that to say, uh, we have felt the physical toll. And at times, even the emotional toll that being a faithful shepherd requires. And I'm so thankful for the team that we have around us, our board of directors, our spiritual advisory team that's phenomenal. People like Tommy Reed and Bill's on it, and so many, so many great leaders are on it. The Miller, Michael Miller is on it. Uh, they all felt like, hey, consistently throughout your life, you need to make it a part of your culture to make sure that you're getting away uh, as a family to just disconnect, hear from the Lord again, and have fun. 
We have like another summer, full summer with Theo until he goes off to school, which hopefully his version of going off to school is going to Jesus school. Uh, <laughs> but we really want to enjoy that uh, <laughs> with him. And um, so this summer we'll be doing that. Uh, we're going to start right around the second week of July. Now, let's is not, let me tell you what this is not. You're not taking your notes going vacation time unless you already have it. If you want to make me happy, and I believe the Lord happy, please do not limit your attendance here based on my attendance. Come for Jesus. He's much more beautiful than myself or anyone else. Now, we have invited amazing, amazing fathers and mothers to come serve you. Um, gosh, the Millers will be here. Uh, Mike Bickle will be joining us by Zoom on one of them. Paul Teske will be here. Pastor Randy will be here. Um, uh, gosh, many. I think, uh, I think Brian Guerin's coming down for a week. Stephanie's trying to come. So they won't be boring meetings. Uh, I promise you that. But I really am hoping to tune in while we're on vacation and watch and see this place filled with people who love Jesus more than they love hearing from their pastor. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I just want to let you guys in on that. All right, let's give the Lord praise so we can transition in a non-awkward way. All right. Okay, let me give you a few scriptures here regarding the blood of Jesus. And then we'll receive communion. There's a great uh, pastor who's gone on to be with the Lord named Maxwell White. He's an English man. And his most prolific teaching was on the blood of Jesus. He uh, lived in England during uh, the war, World War II. And listen to what he writes here. We went through many dangerous air raids in England when buzz bombs were flying everywhere, but we were able, listen to this, to lie down with our children and sleep through much of it. The protection of the blood of Jesus was so real that it seemed like we were sleeping in a strong shelter. In fact, we used to speak of the blood as the best air raid shelter in the world. Isn't that amazing? Say this, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is my shelter. Is my shelter. The, blood the blood of Jesus is my protection. My protection. Say this, the blood, of Jesus the blood of Jesus is a hedge about me. Go to Genesis chapter three, verse six, please. Oh, and Pastor Benny's teaching, I think, twice while we're gone. So, gosh, you guys are... Uh, you know, when churches I used to go to, when the pastor was gone, you'd get, like, the deacon's sister <laughs> preaching. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Lord. All right. Genesis 3, verse 6, speaking of Eve, during the temptation... And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, okay, speaking of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Here we see the manifestation of turning our attention away from the Lord, and stepping into disobedience. Say this out loud. The blood of Jesus deals with my sin and removes it completely. All right, so in this text, we see three categories of sin that Adam and Eve commit, and eventually you're going to see the Lord's method in dealing with them. Number one, the lust of the flesh. Say that, the lust of the flesh. Notice here, Eve saw that it was good for food. So she looks at a tree that God tells her to not feast off of and starts to believe that this tree that is lesser than the tree of life 
can actually become, listen carefully now, a source of nourishment for her. That is called the lust of the flesh. Anytime we prioritize the natural above the presence of Jesus, we step into the lust of the flesh. When I say the natural, I don't mean a glass of water. I'm talking about what the world offers. When I'm talking about the flesh, I mean the fallen nature of our humanity. Anytime we look for human promotion above God's promotion, this is what we step into. It's the lust of the flesh. That's number one. Number two, the lust of the eyes. Notice this. It was pleasant to the eyes. How many marriages would have been saved if men or women honored covenant that is unseen above who they're looking at? All right, can I go a little further with that one? How many financial uh, calamities for a family would have been prevented if somebody followed the scriptures instead of buying a house that they could not afford or a car that they could not afford and didn't need? Oh, man. Say, I remember being 25. That's what we all do at like 30 prior. That's what keeping up with people looks like. It's lacking discernment. It's long, lacking long-range vision. It's lacking planning. It's lacking biblical knowledge. It's lacking stewardship. And the Lord can't give you more because he can't trust you with what you have. That's what the lust of the eyes creates. And now here we talk about spiritual vision and the power of looking away. Now listen carefully. The heart... The heart contains the power of spiritual vision. Matthew 5 says, Blessed are the pure in, for they shall see the Lord. I behold the Lord in my heart, and how I behold, and the frequency by which I behold the Lord, and that's vital if I'm going to become like him, because we look like whoever we stare at. The frequency and the clarity of that in internal vision of the Lord has everything to do with purity, the purity of the heart. Now, the heart is purified through his word, through the presence, uh, through the presence of his spirit, uh, through uh, so many different gifts the Lord has given us in the Christian life. But I want you to understand something. The spiritual vision moves first, Eventually, my eyes and the natural will go with it. The moment I stop looking away from Jesus, my spouse will look less beautiful to me. Of course. You know, the devil's been around a long time. I want you to think of everything that was birthed, everything that has come from, this one fall in the garden. Okay, if it's horrible and you can think of it, there's the origin, turning away from God. Are y'all awake this morning? Or are you just blown away? Okay, it's not that good. It's getting there, but... <sighs> Cancer finds its origin in a fallen world. Lying finds its origin in a fallen world. Greed finds its origin in a fallen world. Broken families find their origin in a fallen world. Addiction finds its origin in the fall. When man fell, when Adam and Eve fell, it became a geyser that would spew forth the worst man could concoct. And the tragedy of sin is that it, because of man's nature that's fallen, the unredeemed man, he must create a more evil uh, vice because the, the nature of sin is that it cannot satisfy the heart. So here we see the lust of the eyes. Let me keep reading. And a tree, look down at verse 6, to be desired to make one wise... 
That's the pride of life. The pride of life is the tree that offers wisdom that's not found in Christ. Well, this is what I want you to understand. Paul writes, he is wisdom unto us. To the Christian, wisdom is a person. That's why the book of Proverbs says that wisdom can cry out, that it speaks. To us, wisdom is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wisdom is not, from a Christian perspective, from a biblical perspective, wisdom is not knowing a bunch of stuff. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to engage in normal conversation. But biblically speaking, wisdom is a person. To the wise God, to the only wise God, the scripture teaches. So here we see the offering of wisdom outside the tree of life that is Christ crucified. You've heard me teach on that many times. This is the revelation that the tree offers life, the cruciform son. To look anywhere else is the pride of life. And the pride of life is offered through the false gift wrapping of worldly wisdom. Amen? All right, let's see what the Apostle John has to say about this. Look at 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 16. Now, before I read this, I want everyone here to close their eyes and out loud, I just want you to pray in the Spirit. Come on, out loud, pray in the Spirit. Praise you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Help me there, Joel, would you? Blessed be your name. Worthy are you, Lord. Praise you. Open our hearts to receive the power of your word. A little more. Blessed are you, Jesus. You watching in your homes, just begin to pray in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay, thank you, Joel. 1 John 2, verses 15 through 16. John addresses this. Do not love the world. I loved, I think it was Ryder. Was that Ryder? No. Caleb. Little Caleb. He, that was hilarious. Do you love people? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. John writes here in his epistle, do not love the world or the things in the world. Some church services today look more like nightclubs in their platform culture. And they aren't even nightclubs I'd want. I mean, they're worse than nightclubs. The world should not infiltrate the, the, the gathering of the saints. Now, the gathering of the saints shouldn't be religious either. But, Paul, but John here clearly writes, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone, listen to this, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Wow. Wow. So if we are worldly, we are not walking in the love of the Father. Unfortunately, we are confusing love with accepting everything. But here the Bible says to love the world, to love materialism, to love uh, anything like that is to not carry the love of the Father. Listen, for all that is in the world. Now John takes us back to the garden here. I just read you this from Genesis 3. Listen to what he says. The lust of the flesh... Right? You're going to look at three categories here. There's the same three. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The same issue in the garden. Is not of the Father, but is of this world. Uh, you're going to see the same thing flush out in the temptation of Jesus. Quickly, quickly. Go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 3. The same three. Satan offers Jesus 
the same three. Same three categories that were offered in the garden. And that's very important. If you're there, say uh-huh. Now I want you to see the majesty of God here. Adam is standing in a paradise, both spiritually and naturally, in Eden, in the Garden of Eden, which means pleasure. Eden means pleasure. And God plants a garden in Eden. Listen, he will only plant a garden in your life that is found in the pleasure of the Spirit. To those who find their pleasure in God, God will begin to cultivate a garden whereby he is the vine dresser and the gardener. When your heart becomes filled with the pleasure of God, he will be sure that a garden is planted there. And being that when he was raised, Mary Magdalene sees him and mistakes him as a gardener. It was the Lord's way of saying, I am still the divine gardener. But he will not plant a garden in the heart of the person who doesn't find their pleasure in him. You say, why do I need a garden? Because that's where gardeners live. And so much fruit will come forth from that garden that people will begin to feast on your simple little heart that has learned to fellowship with the Lord. Hallelujah is right. This is amazing that the world can be impacted by one little heart that has become a garden. I feel the presence of God now. It took us a while to get here because you took too much melatonin on the way in. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So now Jesus is in the wilderness. I want you to see the, the wisdom of God. Jesus is in the wilderness. There's no natural garden around. It's the opposite. Eve falls to temptation and Adam. They fall to temptation surrounded by natural beauty. And now the perfect son, the last Adam, goes into the wilderness to destroy the tempter by rejecting him and obeying his father. Do you see the pattern here? You see the picture? So now the devil comes in Matthew 4, 3 and says, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. What's he appealing to here? The lust of the flesh. You notice there's a meal being offered? Offering the bread of life, natural bread? Bad idea. Bad idea. I said bad idea. Look down here at verse 8 of Matthew 4. When the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory, Matthew 4, 8. What did he do there? What do you think he did there? Think of the three categories. What did he do? What was he offering? Lust of the eyes. He showed him the kingdoms and said, grab it. Mm. Lastly, in verse 6, Lastly, in verse 6, the devil appears, appeals to the pride of life. Listen to this in verse 6 of Matthew 4. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Here he offers the pride of life. Very conveniently, the devil left out a portion of Psalm 91 there. And by the way, he's quoting Psalm 91. You see, the devil would never use the Bible to screw me up. She sure would. If you don't find Christ crucified in it, you will misuse the text. In fact, sinful lives, people who are promoting willful sin, have to find a theology to justify it. And they use scriptures that are incomplete and twist them to justify their perspective. That's what they do. They, they can't stay in the church unless they construct their own theology. 
They need it, so they do what the devil did here. And what did he conveniently leave out there? Which is, <laughs> it's, it's quite hilarious. You will not allow, he will not allow you to dash your foot against a stone. And he conveniently leaves out this verse. And you will tread upon lions and cobras. It's a good idea for him not to mention that. Okay, how does Jesus deal with those temptations? The same three categories again. Through the written word, he says it is written. But now I want to take you, before we take communion, I want you to see the power of this. I want you to see how the Lord dealt with the lust of the eyes, the lust, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life that is being offered to us in this culture nonstop. Unfortunately, still, even in the church. And may the Lord change all of that. I said, may the Lord change all of that. Genesis 3.21. Go there. Can you help me, Joel? Are you enjoying this? Yes. All right, so here's this absolute tragedy that the world is still paying for the fall. Adam and Eve lose everything. They die inside, for Jesus said to them, for in the day you eat of this fruit, you will die. So they died inside, and then hundreds of years later, they actually die physically, but they really died when they disobeyed. And they noticed something. Listen carefully. They noticed something. They noticed they were naked. You say, uh, well, that wouldn't be hard to notice. <laughs> well... You have to understand that prior to the fall, Adam and Eve were actually clothed in his glory. So it wasn't just this realization that things were the way they'd always been. No, the, the covering, the, the glory, the Shekinah, the very tangible presence of the Lord. That is, the Lord who is arrayed in light, who clothed them in his light, was gone. Friends, that is death. That's death. And in that moment, the awareness of self is birthed in humanity. And so rather than cruciform and cross help, we've developed self help. Rather than dying, we've become addicted to preservation rather than giving we've become experts at demanding and receiving rather than serving and carrying our cross we've become incredible at arguing huh? rather than being comfortable in the shadows we shine the light on ourselves rather than finding a crevice in the rock like Moses and Jesus and Elijah to pray we'd rather stand on the mountain and say, come look at me. And we find churches today because they receive our gifting and see our anointing and make way for us. So nothingness that is only found in the shadow of the Most High, which is the clothing of glory, is rejected and we've chosen the nakedness of self-awareness. Now God is a remedy. I said God is a remedy. And the remedy is the blood of Jesus. Genesis 3.21. Oh, this is powerful. And the Lord God. I'm oh, sorry. And also for Adam and his wife. The Lord God made coverings or tunics of skin and clothed them. Here we see 
the Lord himself institute the truth of innocent sacrifice for another's guilt. Where did the Lord get these skins? Think about it. He didn't have a skin factory or a leather shop. Here we see that an animal had to be slain and that animal had to cover the guilty, the guilty party. The sinner, the perfect, the innocent, had to cover the sinner. And this is what the Lord does here. And most likely, surely in fact, as he covered them in skins, they would be smeared in the blood of Jesus. Or the blood of the animal, I should say, representative of the blood of Jesus. Now they understood that only the blood could cover their nakedness. And it was the blood that was God's remedy in dealing with lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Say it's the blood. Say it again. It's the blood. Say it again. It's the blood. Now here's the powerful thing. I, I want you to understand how to come receive communion this morning. So, so you, please hear me. Anytime you get near the tree, the precious cross, you'll find blood flowing down. And the cross seems too difficult to carry. And it, it is in the natural. It's so difficult. But if you're willing to carry the cross, something beautiful happens that happened to Simon of Cyrene. Here's Jesus, weak in his mortal body, carrying the cross. And he can't go any further. The Romans find a man of Cyrene named Simon and tell him to carry the cross. He had to carry the shame of Christ, in a sense, in front of a world who saw the cross as a curse because the scripture says, cursed be any man who hangs on a tree. But what happened to Simon that day? What would Simon have been covered in if he took that cross upon him? Say the blood of Jesus. Oh my gosh. Do you realize how powerful it is to take up the tree regardless of the shame by which the world views it? You are clothed in the blood of Jesus and naked no more. In a sense, God clothes you like he clothed Adam and Eve, but not with animal skins with the precious blood of his son. Give the Lord praise. Would you do that? Oh, we love you, Lord. With every head bowed and eye closed, I'm not going to ask you to come forward this morning. If I could have the ushers just come and just prepare the, the elements. I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I am going to preach the gospel. Friend, listen to me. Every, every head bowed and eye closed. Nobody looking around. You do not want to walk around this fallen world and attempt to make your own clothing of self-righteousness like Adam and Eve. There is no way to shield your sin from the vision of God. Adam and Eve attempted this. They discovered themselves that the glory had departed and so they looked to earthly means to cover their sin. And this is what I say to you today, boldly and lovingly. Do not try to cover your sin through your own creativity, your own ideas, and your own self-righteousness. Allow the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus alone to cover you. You say, how does that happen? By leaving everything. By leaving all that has caused you to fall. By, by rejecting 
what the devil has so consistently offered you and by turning fully to Jesus this morning. With every head bowed and eye closed. Number one, if you know there's sin in your life and it needs to go, this is for you. Number two, number two, if you've fallen away from the Lord and you once walked with him and you deeply loved him at one point and that's gone, this is for you as well. For some of you, you've never had the beauty, the wondrous experience of becoming a new creation in Christ. You watched these baptisms today and you were blown away. You've never understood or experienced that beautiful, glorious privilege of being brand new, being born again, the scripture calls it. If you're one of those three, I just want you to quickly lift your hand this morning. And then once you have, put it back down. Don't be embarrassed. Just put your hand up and then put it back down. I'd like everyone to stand. I'd like us to just pray this out loud. And then you'll come forward row by row and receive communion. And what I'm going to ask is, is that nobody received communion alone this morning. I'm going to ask that, that you would look for somebody. If you have people with you, if you see somebody who's alone, invite them to receive with you. You'll come up. You'll receive the elements, the body and blood of Jesus. You will very carefully and reverently go back to your seat, receive the body and blood, and then you're welcome to go in the peace of the Lord. Let's lift our hands to heaven. Say this out loud. Heavenly Father, forgive us our sins. Wash us in the holy blood of Jesus. We have sinned against you, and we repent. Today, Lord Jesus, we put all our trust in you. We confess, we declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. We believe that you lived a perfect and holy life, that you died on the cross, that you were buried and raised. And we believe that you've ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are coming back again to rule and reign forever. And today, Lord, we receive the presence of your Spirit. Fill us as we repent of our sin and give you in the entirety of our lives. Jesus is the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord praise this morning? <laughs> Ushers, you are welcome to uh, begin leading the people, inviting them down. For those of you who are sick in your body, actually, let me pray very quickly. Lord, as we receive your body and blood, we remember your suffering and pain. We remember your passion. We remember, Lord, your death, burial, and resurrection. We remember your betrayal. And we say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Thank you, Lord. And let your precious presence descend on this moment as we receive the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Could I have the worship team come up and just minister to the Lord for, for a bit? God bless you all. Thank you.
Hey guys, Michael here from Jesus Image in Orlando, Florida. We are so excited to be coming to the West Coast of America, specifically California, and we really believe this is the Lord and that He is about to move in great power and glory in America. And it's an honor for us to be part of that storyline. That being said, we want to broadcast these incredible meetings to the world. As you know, the Lord has really blessed uh, the media ministry here at Jesus Image. We have an amazing team, but at the end of the day, we all know and are aware of the fact that it is the Holy Spirit. We need a separate system to broadcast the Jesus Tour and our other events on the road. The cost of that is $350,000. And so I'm asking all of you to pray and to deeply consider being a part of helping us see the nations tune in to the move of the Holy Spirit on the West Coast. So would you pray about sowing a seed and walking in generosity? I know the Lord will bless you for it as we give back to Him what He's already given us for the sake and glory. Years ago, we felt our hearts burning for a place that would invite wholehearted, devoted lovers of Jesus to come sit at His feet and to hear His voice. What the Lord is doing at Jesus School is just so special. There's really nothing like it. It's like your eyes open and you see Jesus in a way that you've never known him before. We've seen miracles, we've seen people born again, we've seen people set free. We've seen worship go up in the most beautiful way as Jesus is being adored. And it's the presence of Jesus and the presence of Jesus alone that changes lives. What makes Jesus School so special and so unique is it really is all about Jesus. It's the simplicity of loving Him and being with Him. It truly transforms your life. There is absolutely no substitute for the presence of the Lord Jesus. And that's what Jesus School is. It is a house for His glory and a people who love Him with everything in their heart. When you lay all the other things down, lay them at His feet, and when you just want Him, you will never be the same.